Hello and welcome back to the Autrix Weekly Challenge with me, Nick Bignall. This is challenge number 52 and this one is a maths problem, a problem puzzle. So it's uh, called the knapsack problem. There are five boxes of varying weights. So if we look in the um, starting file, we've got five rows, each one representing a box of different weights, kilogram weights, and then some a dollar value, and then we actually have a lat long and centroid as well for additional information. Uh, from a challenge standpoint, which combination of box or boxes is most optimal if you were allowed one box in a backpack, or two boxes in a backpack, or three or four? Okay, so what they mean by that is detail the details of the number of boxes and total dollars without going over 15 kilograms. So, to me, well, I've been thinking about this challenge overnight. It's been I've been looking at. I read the question yesterday, and uh, I'm trying to work out the best way of doing this because I guess there's a number of ways you can do it. There's even uh, something called a location optimizer macro you can use, but I feel like using a macro is, is che cheating slightly. I don't know. Anyway, the point of that point one is the score is actually the dollars. Um, is the dollar score. Yeah, the highest number of dollars without going over 15 kilograms with either one, two, three or four different um, combinations of packages. Okay, and then the output two is to then put it into this to, sh is to show the breakout of all of those. So the first one, num num I num items is one item, uh, which has the four and the ten, as uh, kilograms and dollars, which you converts to the one item with the score of ten, which means it refers to the dollars. Uh, and the second one for two would be twelve because it's package with four gram kilograms and two kilograms be the score 12 here with two okay so uh, the first the first item is fairly straightforward um, so first the first thing I am going to do though is add a uh, record ID and I'm going to do that so that we can break them apart break this apart and then bring it back together the record ID is just gives you a record ID against each one. So we now have a record ID, one, two, three, four, five against each. So we can now call these packages one, this package is two, this package is three. So we've got something to reference. So we don't need this lat long centroid because I'm not using this macro. So um, I'm going to get rid of them as well because they'll just confuse, uh, confuse matters. <clears throat> and then for the first one, the first row, because I'm going to have to break them out into each number of items so we'll do a section which is the first one the section which is the second section the third etc so the first one we basically what we want to do is let me just run this data uh, is that we want to sort by they're all under you know first of all we can actually we can apply the filter right so anything because uh, we're going to reuse this particular part of the workflow um, so let's just actually what I always said, also like to do is if I can find a documentation tab is use a container so if I put this in here uh, we'll use this container and we'll call this container one item um, containers are good because they allow you to kind of group things and processes together in one area so you know what's going on so this is sort of the process for one item and basically what we're going to do is take the kilogram and make sure that it is under 15 okay now actually is it it's actually under or equal so we'll change that to under or equal 15 okay so that'll just, they're, they're all under 15 for this one but i'm going to reuse this bit and then um for the others so let's then all we have to do is sort uh, and we want to sort on the, the amount and make it descending and now for this one this particular one we're going to sample because we're dealing with the with one item we're going to sample the first row okay now if we run that what we'll get there is record five 
4 kilograms and 10. Now if we look in this output here, it's 4 kilograms and 10, one item. So what we will add here is a formula that says num num item um, and we'll call this one one there. okay so we now have the um, uh, the item number okay so we can then at, at some point get rid of this record ID but we'll leave it there for now but we've got the rest of that one so I'm going to go through the rest and what I'm going to be used to create let's just copy this paste because uh, what we want with this and we'll call this let me just make that the right size again um, we'll just leave this over here for now um, but this is two items and this will be the same process but we want to take the top two and we want to call it two so we we know we can reference back to it so that will form back into there and uh, then we basically build out how do we do this and I'm going to use a uh, I'm going to use a multi-row formula just bring this I'll just bring that there actually for now um, and what I'm going to work out is total kg and uh, what we're going to do is work out based on and we want this is two so we we want to increase the number of rows to five just so we've got um, uh, actually plus we only need five rows so the act we'll work off this one and then this is row two three four five and uh, we can then build out all the different combinations uh, we'll have to do it multiple times and bring them together and union them back together but anyway you will see so I'll get guy
Okay, well, right, I've got the uh, I've got the same results, but just I can't work out how to get it in the same order. But I guess that doesn't really matter. It's not. It's it's the same. It's the same results uh, where we've got. Uh, so in the in our summary, uh, we've got items one one item two item three. And we've got 12, 10, 12, 13, 14, and they have the same 10, 12, 13, 14. In the detail, they've got uh, four kilograms and ten dollars and for one item, and it's a total of six. It's four and two and ten and two for dollars for two. So if we look in here, we've got four and two and ten and two. So that's the same. It's just when you get to three where they've got four, two, one and ten to one for three. Well, we've got uh, they've got four, two, one in a different order and ten to one in a slightly different order. Um, can't quite work out why that is. It might be just it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's the results the same. There you go. I'm sure there's a much easier way of doing it. Uh, this is probably what's in the macro <laughs> or something that loops around like, that, like this. I'm sure there's a looping process you could do. Um, but there you go. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next time.